Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Point and Click Puzzle Games, whereby in today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about text editors, and we're going to actually look at downloading Visual Studio. Now, I'm working on a PC environment. If you're on a Mac, don't worry, I've got a couple of other options for you, but you will be on your own a little bit with regards to downloading that. So if you're a child and you're watching this, you might want to ask your parents for some help. Um, but I'm going to go as slow and as easy as possible in order to make sure that you guys can follow. Okay, so welcome back. Okay, so we are basically going to be downloading a text editor. Now, if you've been watching some of my other videos in this little sequence, as we get you up and running, you will know in the last episode, we downloaded the Solar 2D game engine, which basically is like the workshop in which we are going to simulate our games, run our code, bug fix, and see what's going on. But we need something to write our code in our Lua programming language. We need to write it somewhere. We need to save this as a file. And then we need to be able to tell the Solar 2D engine to run that script. So we need a text editor. And that's what this video is all about. Now, I am working on a Windows environment. I did a computing degree, which was all Windows based, uh, PC based. So that's kind of where I've come from in life. If you're a parent watching this in hoping to help um, your children. That's fine. I just didn't expect many children to have access to a Mac, possibly adults, designers, if you're just trying to learn to tinker and things. But the majority of people I'm presuming are working on a PC environment, which is why I'm going to show you right now how to find out what is the best text ed editor for your environment if you're not on a PC. And we are going to walk ourselves through the downloading Visual Studio and a couple of plugins that you need in order to make everything work for our Lua environment. So I am just going to share my screen with you two seconds. Okie dokie. So as you can see, I am already navigated to the, it's obviously still called Corona Labs website. Um, we are, at, and I'll put the link below, but obviously they're still changing their name as you will see me repeat loads of times. So this is essentially the Solar 2D game engine. This is their documentation. So I'm at docs.coronalabs.com. And again, if you're watching this in the future, this was filmed in August 2020. They are in a migration phase of rebranding the entire Corona SDK simulated to call it Solar 2D. So you might find that that URL will be a slightly different uh, variation of this because they'd have uh, got around to changing the, the name. But we are essentially on this page and we're going to get started. And that is going to bring us over to um, basically this uh, getting started screen. Now, in the last episode, we looked at like the introduction so that you knew what Solar 2D was all about. But we're going to click on chapter one, creating a project. Now, over the coming tutorials, I'm going to go through everything. And I'm just going to quickly scroll down the page. But I'm going to go everything on this page with you in depth. And it will be over two or three videos. So don't look at this page in full at the moment. But the reason we are here right now is because of this section here. It says using Solar 2D. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're on a Mac environment or you're on a PC environment. This is what you basically need to have a quick nose at because you are looking at the text editors. Now, if we wanted to and you're on a PC, the chances are you're going to have Notepad. You could just learn to write your code directly into Notepad and instead of saving it as a .txt file, kids, if I'm losing you, don't worry, just go and ask a parent. But if instead of saving it as a text file, you could save it as .lua. For Lua, and that would be simple and perfectly fine, and it would work. But when it comes to complex code, when you get lines and lines and lines and lines of code, it's much more strenuous on the eye looking at that code because it's all one black piece of code. It doesn't map text properly. It doesn't really show you the connection between other parts of the code and parent code and child code and all that kind of stuff, which we will learn. So it helps you to write your Lua programming script inside a text editor. Now we are going to be looking at Visual Studio. Visual Studio, again, is a free tool which is licensed by um, open source software again. So we've covered this a little bit in other in other um, tutorials. I am an Adobe uh, sort of suite user. I have range 
all of the Adobe tools because this is what I do as a business. I'm a graphic designer, website designer, um, and I basically, you know, video edit. I use everything that they pretty much have to offer. So I would normally choose to do this in Dreamweaver. If you have access to things like Dreamweaver, this is, might be the option that you choose. And of course, that might work on, on obviously the Mac and the uh, uh, PC environment, but as a tutorial to you guys, I'm going to stick with open source code so that you parents or your parents uh, don't have to go and pay out any money on anything. So, um, literally, it's if you go to code.visualstudio.com, um, you will find yourself on this page. Or likewise, if I go back one screen, you could click on the Visual, Visual Studio Code link showing there. Um, basically. Um, there's some add-on packages that you might need to add on, which we're going to look at. Uh, there is also um, some other options like this one here, Zero Brain Studio works on both a Mac and a Windows environment. I've never used it, never touched it. I don't know about it. So, but that might be a logical one for you guys. Um, as I said, I started off life doing a computing based degree. So I tinkered with Visual Studio back in the day. So that was instantly my go to uh, software. So you click on the download and you'd run and install this in exactly the same way you would any other platform. So you just click on and it was download the, the tool. There you go, it's downloading. And then you save the .exe file which is up here, and then go to your downloads folder on your computer, as we covered in the last episode, and you would basically run it. And again, I would accept the default everything. Now, I'm just gonna load Visual Studio on my computer so that I can also show you then what it looks like. So we'll bear with me just one second. Right, so um, I might have to change the theme because I, by default, I've got like a dark theme going on. I don't know if I've, once I've set things up, I leave them as they are, to be honest with you. I might have to change this for the next video that I do. But essentially, this is the environment that you're going to write text in. Um, on the left hand side, you've got your navigation so that you can find your folders and any of the code that you write. Um, there's lots of things that you can do in here and test and extensions. Now, this is fine, but again, in this format at the moment, it doesn't really work with the Lua programming language. What you need to do is actually download an extension. Now, there's two things to bear in mind. One is that before this page actually said that there was this extension needed here, I had downloaded from the Visual Studio Marketplace this extension here, which basically means that when Visual Studio is installed on your computer, it knows to help you write code in hundreds of different languages. It just didn't happen to have the Lua programming language. Although you could write in it, it just wouldn't color code it and help you out. So by adding this downloadable extension and installing it in exactly the same way, that basically helps you color code your code so it makes it easier on your eye. So you can click on the download button. Again, it will give you the extension. You save the file. It's going to download it. And again, I'm in Firefox. You click on that. You can see everything that I've downloaded. Show all the folders. Um, I prefer to just navigate straight to my uh, Windows environment and my normal folder and tree hierarchy here. So I can go to my downloads folder. And there you can see I've got the visual code that we downloaded a moment ago, as well as the Lua extension. Um, and that is basically where we are at. Once you've done it again, accept all of the defaults. And then what we're going to do in the next video is basically write our first piece of code, we're going to learn how to save it how to open a project and connect everything together and then run it in our simulator. So um, that's it from me today. Let me just take myself back onto the screen. I hope that helps. Please do subscribe, stay notified to my channel and I will see you on the next video real soon.